Hello everyone, this is so exciting because I have not posted a video in a hot second. So today let's talk about my anticipated releases. My anticipated releases videos are some of my favorites to film. I just love talking about all of the new exciting and upcoming titles coming out in the next few months. Typically I've done these twice a year and sometimes I've separated them into fantasy and romance separately. However, I decided this year I'm going to do it a little different and I'm going to do it quarterly and just throw everything that I'm interested in together in one video. The reason that I decided to do this is because I've been reading a lot more indie lately, KU romances, and there's just not as much of like, I guess, a notice for when indie romances go up. So if I were to post a video now through June, there could be a lot of indie books that don't get captured in that because they get announced closer to the release date. With a shorter time frame for each video, there's more books that I can go into because I should have more time, theoretically. And I'm gonna cater this more so to my tastes. Like in the past, I've tried to capture like every single book that is coming out in the time frame, but that's just impossible. <laughs> so I'm catering this to the books that I personally am excited about and that I have my eyes on and, and want to read. So with that, let's get into it. And yes, I know this is like mid-February when I'm posting it, so it's like almost half of the time frame is gone, but there are still so many good books that have come out already and are coming out within the next few weeks that I still think should be highlighted. So let's get started with January. I think you'd have to be living under a rock in the book world to not know about this book and that it was coming out. And this came out on January 31st. It is House of Flame and Shadow. It is the third in the Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas and the conclusion to Hunt and Bryce's piece of the story. I actually did finish this before <laughs> filming this and there's going to be a House of Flame and Shadow reading vlog, which I'm so excited about because I looked back and I realized I never filmed a reading vlog for my experience with House of Sky and Breath, and I really enjoy capturing my experiences with these books and sharing with you guys, so I'm really excited about that. So hopefully that will be out next week. But that being said, Crescent City is like this modern world with technology, and we are following Bryce Quinlan. She is this half fae party girl, and she has her best friend Danica, who is a wolf. And then one day Danica is brutally murdered, and Bryce is just absolutely devastated by it. Three years later, they think the same murderer is on the loose, and an angel that is part of like the governor's security force, if you will, is tasked with helping her track down the murder and that's how this story started. It got wild, it went crazy, it went different places, but definitely check out my reading vlog for my full thoughts. Next is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett and this is a book that I've really been wanting to pick up especially because I know it's like very wintry. I actually got an arc at a conference in 2022 that I went to for the first book, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I really want to get my hand, I mean I'm trying not to buy things without knowing if I like them first, so if I like this I really want to get my hands on the hardcover because they have like the printed on directly hardcover which I kind of like and I just think the design of this book is absolutely absolutely beautiful. And it's like academia and you know me, I'm a STEM girly. I love my woman in not only STEM but just academia and achieving in their careers. So we're following Emily Wilde and she is kind of this like curmudgeon professor who is studying the lore of the fairies and so she goes to this remote town to learn more about the local fairy lore there. It was also set in the early 1900s. However, her rival professor also ends up in the town and he is kind of like very charming to the townsfolk and Emily feels like he's getting in the way of her research and he's so charming and blah 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 so she's like the curmudgeon one and he's the sunshiny one but also there's something suspicious about him and I, I the more I talk about this more I'm like do I pick this up next because I really think that this is going to be a book for me because I love that like intersection of like fantasy romance and like just very whimsical vibes if you will. Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands came out on January 16th. Next up we have Destroy the Day by Bridget Kimmerer, which I really need to go to Barnes & Noble and get my hands on the exclusive edition. But I love Bridget Kimmerer's fantasy books. I ate up A Curse of Dark and Lonely and the subsequent series, and I love this series as well, and I'm so excited for the conclusion. We have Defy the Night and Defend the Dawn are the first two books. So Defy the Night kind of just like had me in a chokehold when I read it. I actually have an arc. Uh, it's up there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can bend you to see it. Oh, all the way at the top there. That's where I keep my little arc collection. And I, I loved it ever since I read the arc. 
So we have the kingdom of Kandala and they are basically facing this plague and you need the moonflower petals to stave off this plague. However, because corruption is everywhere, the government really like hoards the moonflower petals for themselves and doesn't give them to the poor. So now we have Tessa who is an apothecary and she and her friend Wes steal from the palace to distribute the moonflower petals to the poor to help them save off this plague. Then something really cruel happens that the Prince Justice does, aka the king's brother, um, and Tess is enraged enough that she sneaks into the palace and just sets off this whole chain of events. The plot was sort of a bit obvious to me, but I really knew nothing about this book going in, and I was very delighted by it. Um, it kind of, it has very Robin Hood vibes, and I truly just love this book. And again, I'm like, oh, I need to get my hands on the third one so I can read it really soon. And I've just been very excited for the conclusion of these characters' stories. Destroy the Day came out on January 23rd. Next is Dark Star Burning Ash Falls White by Emily Wen Zhao which is the sequel to Song of Silver Flame Like Night. And this book is said to have very like sea drama or Chinese drama vibes with a similar like plot and pacing. So I think that's very cool. And I saw the sequel to this, the Barnes & Noble exclusive when I was there last week and I should have, I should have picked it up. But you know what, I can rectify that by going there and picking it up again because it had very um, pretty features. So Lan's kingdom has been overrun and before her parents are killed, her mother burns this strange mark into her arm and now in the conquered land she's working as a song girl and then one day Zen rescues her from this tea house. Zen is a practitioner with powerful magic that must be hidden from their conquerors and he realizes that Lan also has the same magic. So yes, I think this is definitely very steeped in Chinese folklore and I am very excited to pick up the sequel as well because I love the purple of the Barnes & Noble edition. Dark Star Burning Ash Falls White came out on January 2nd. Next is Fabon by Sarah L. Arafi. And this has come highly recommended to me from some friends and I trust their opinion and it also just sounds really really cool. And it says, divine by blood, imprisoned by fate, bound by desire, welcome to the intoxicating world of the Fae. I love some good Fae <laughs> worlds. So Yurin is a soldier in the elven army and her sister is a diviner and they're just trying to live their lives as much as they can. But when a fatal mistake leads to her and her sister's exile from the elven lands, they are forced into the terrifying wilderness beyond the borders and they encounter a fey court which have- and I've just heard a lot of great things about this book. The cover is beautiful and it was published on January 23rd. Now this book I've seen tons of people say is just like emotionally devastating and I love that. I'm very excited for it and it is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker and it has dragons. So we follow Rave who is an assassin and she gets captured and finds herself at the mercy of the Guild of Nobles. Then we have Khan who killed the last king and is on this quest for Moonshard and then he stumbles across Rave and it just turns his world upside down. Even the description just seems very lyrical and I feel like I'm not uh, describing it to you guys right. I would just read the description yourself because it I think encapsulates the writing style probably more than I can but I'm very excited for this one and it seems like it packs a big emotional punch. When the Moon Hatched came out on January 13th. Next is Twilight of Embers by Tessa Hale and this one came highly recommended by my friend Maddie over at I want to say Princess of Paperback, but she rebranded, so she's Madison Box now because she's cool. She's an author. Um, so this is a Why Choose with Dragon Shifters, and Maddie just said it was a really entertaining audiobook, and I am here for it. And it takes place on a college campus, and I think there are five men that she is in a relationship with, and they're all Dragon Shifters, and it just sounds like a really fun time. <laughs> Twilight of Embers came out on January 19th. Next is Wing So Wicked by Emily Blackwood, and this one seems really cool. It's got the like academic setting of Fourth Wing, uh, and it's got like vampires. So Hunter is a vampire slayer, and she has to go through this academy to get to the Golden City for a mission, and she is roomed with a wolf who's a terrifying fallen angel who knows that she's an assassin. So yeah, I mean, academy setting, assassins, vampires, you name it, I'm there. Wings So Wicked came out on January 12th. Next is The Ever Queen by LJ Andrews. I saw uh, Rachel from Raven Hair Reader read The Ever King and said it had like pirate vibes and was like spicy and fun. I'm like, 
that's really all I needed to be sold. There's also a companion like Viking series that's nine books long that I eventually would dig into if I enjoy the author. And it seems like this is a duology or at least this part of the series is going to be a duology. So basically Eric is a king that is kind of forced to be a pirate and then his enemy's daughter ends up on his ship somehow and he's uh, gonna use her as a pawn for revenge. So love a good, love a good enemies to lovers story like that. The Ever Queen came out on January 26th. Next is Brood and Magic by Jenna Wolfhart and this is just a cozy fantasy and after all, I really want to explore more cozy fantasy because I just think it's so heartwarming and cute. So Lila has a traveling tavern and she meets this mysterious stranger on the road to the winter festival and then he disappears in the morning only for her to find out that he has a rival traveling tavern and he got to the festival first. So I mean that just sounds so cozy and cute and this book came out on January 2nd. Okay now we are moving on to February. First up is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Oh my god, you guys, I'm so, so excited for this one. I hopefully am going to pick it up very soon. You know I'm like Allie Hazelwood's number one fan. And when I found out that she was coming out with a paranormal rom-com, I think I screamed. I think I screamed. And it has nodding. If you don't know what that is, please just, just Google it. Okay. So she's a vampire. Her name is Misery. She's a vampire. And she has to form a marriage alliance with an alpha werewolf. I mean... What more could you want? What more could you want? I love this whole resurgence of paranormal rom-coms and like traditionally published romance. I'm so excited and I just can't wait to read this and Bride came out January 6th. Next is Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey um, and she's a redhead with a guy that likes to golf and I'm a redhead who is marrying a guy that likes to golf so I'm like maybe she wrote this for me. However, my husband-to-be is not a professional golfer but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> So there's Josephine, who's like the golfer Wells' number one fangirl, um, even though he is not doing well and he's very grumpy. And then she finally kind of gives up on him and he's like, oh no, what do I do? So then he shows up to her doorstep and he's like, hey, I want you to be my new caddy. Okay, I'm here for it. I, I have not read any golf romance so far, but if I have faith that anyone can make golf sexy, it's Tess Bailey. Fangirl Down comes out February 13th. Next is The Catch by Amy Leah. Amy Leah is also another autobi romance author for me. I literally fell in love with her book Set on You. This is the third book in the Influencer series and this time we are following Mel who has been a in the friend group of the other two books and she is a travel influencer and she goes to this small town and it's actually a rural fishing village in Canada and there's this grumpy lobster fisherman there and there's like a feud over a B and B, and they are fake fiancés, and I just eat that up. The catch comes out February thirteenth. Next is a Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Fazel. Hafsa Fazel wrote uh, We Hunt the Stars duology, which I have been bullied by my friends to read, so I do want to read that soon. But I'm also very excited for her new book, and it's got this kind of like I want to say maybe steampunk vibe, and they're going on a heist, and it just sounds so cool. And apparently there's vampires. I mean, look at that cover; it's so pretty. So we have Arthi, who is a criminal master and she owns a tea room which turns into an illegal blood house by dark but when her establishment is threatened she has to strike a deal with an alluring adversary to save it and she has to call upon a band of misfits to infiltrate vampire society i mean doesn't that just sound amazing that sounds so fun Tempest of tea is out february 20th so next we have tales from the celestial kingdom by su lin tan and this is a novella That is a companion to Daughter of the Moon Goddess and Heart of the Sun Warrior. Um, loved this book when I read it. No, I haven't read the sequel yet. Okay, don't judge me. Um, but yeah, it's a compilation of short stories from the time during these two books. Love the cover. I am a sucker for this book. I just thought it was so well done, so beautiful. And yeah, I, I know. I need to read the sequel. Okay, okay, stop bullying me. Although I'm, I'm really just bullying myself. <laughs> Next is Fate Breaker by Victoria Aveyard, and I have the first book, Realm Breaker, here. Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard was one of the series that, like, finally got me back into reading YA uh, after I graduated college, or I think I read it while I was in college, actually, and it was that book, and An Ember in the Ashes, or, like, I, at that time I was picking up very random books. I didn't really, I don't think I was really, like, aware of YA as, like, a thing anymore. 
because I didn't really read quite a lot when I was in college. I didn't have time. So I picked up Red Queen and I just was like instantly sucked in. I was hooked. I was like, what is this pacing? Where are these characters? Like, oh my god. And so that series just holds a very special place in my heart. And so I really like Victoria Aviard as the author. And here is her book, Realm Breaker. The second book is something else. Um, and the third book is Fate Breaker. Sorry. Oh no, the second book is Broken Blade. So this is very... Um, Lord of the Rings inspired so it's a high fantasy adventure. Kareem lives in a small town and then this immortal and lethal assassin comes to tell her she's the last of an ancient lineage with the power to save the world from destruction. So then she gathers a band of misfits together and they go on an adventure. So it's a very like quest focused book. Um, so it says, a squire, the survivor of a failed quest, an immortal, timeless, and unfathomable, an assassin, skilled and heartless, an old sorceress, holding secrets behind her teeth, and a pirate's daughter, the ward's last hope. The heroes are gone, but the fight to save the world has only just begun. I love a good classic fantasy adventure. Fatebreaker is out February 27th. Next is What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher, which is a sequel to What Moves the Dead, which I know is a sporer that is a aka a, a mushroom horror that is like a novella length um, and is based on a retelling of The House of Usher, I want to say, by Edgar Allan Poe. It's mushroom horror. Um, mushroom horror is like particularly terrifying if you've seen The Last of Us or if you've read uh, well, I don't want to say that actually. That's kind of a spoiler. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you've seen The Last of Us, you know the scariness of Mushroom Horror. So yeah, looking forward to that second book. And these are pretty short. They're novellas, but I feel like they still, like T. Fisher can really pack a punch in a small amount of pages. And What Feasts at Night is out February 13th. Next we have A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel L. Jensen and this is her new romanticy book and it's based on North mythology and this cover is stunning. These beautiful blue sprayed edges in the first edition I'm so excited to see because in the videos I've seen online they look very sparkly. I love sparkly things. So Freya is a shield maiden and basically she kind of hates her husband and then gets into some kind of controversy and has to battle her husband's son and reveals that she has a drop of the goddess's blood in her and her magic makes her capable of repelling any attack. Oh wait, sorry, she's not fighting her husband's son, she's fighting the ruler's son Bjorn. Bjorn? Bjorn? I never know how to say that name. Yeah, it looks beautiful and it is out on February 27th and I'm very excited. <sighs> Next is Lore of the Wild by Annabelle Sobrana. So we have a human lore whose village is threatened by the Fae and then she goes and makes a deal that she will go and catalog this enchanted library for these Fae um, and no Fae can enter this library. But really she's after one thing and one thing only which is magic for herself and she must rely on two Fae males to help her navigate the world. So I, I'm sensing a little bit of a love triangle here. I'm very excited about this one and it is out on February 27th. Next is Storms of Secrets and Shadows by Melissa K. Rorick. I don't even know how to describe the first book, which is Reign of Shadows and Endings. It is kind of like unlike anything that I've really ever read before. That book was 700 pages and I think I like binged through it in 24 hours maybe. It is this very, it's a dark fantasy. Like it's dark romance fantasy. So it's dark. Please look up content warnings before you read it. But we are in this world where there are fae and they are subservient to the legacies who are descended from the gods. So every legacy heir gets a fae that is kind of like their power source and they are bonded together. But the fae that's like the source kind of like loses a nod me and is basically a slave. So we have Tessa who just kind of is trying to escape by life and not get chosen and then Theon sees her and he's like no like that's gonna be my fae, uh, I forget the name, the source for him. And we just go on a wild adventure. It is dark, but it is gripping and enthralling, and I just couldn't stop reading it. And I'm very, very intrigued what the second book is going to be. And I don't know, it just captivated my attention like nothing else, really. And I'm like, maybe I need more fantasies that are like dark. So I'll leave that at that. But um, I'm very intrigued for where this book is going to go. Storm of Secrets and Shadows is out February 27th. Next is Fate and Furies by Helen Schreier and this is the third book in the Blood and Steel series which like oh my god the series is also a new romanticy fave so we are following Thea and she lives in this world where 
because of our prophecy women are forbidden from picking up steel but all she wants is to be a warrior and she kind of like fights her way into becoming that and there is this famous war I want to say they're called Warhammers um, Wilder and they have like mentor mentee vibes going on. The first book was so good. The second book was even better. It just got like spicier. It just brought all the angst and the ending was crazy. The ending was crazy. I'm like, I need an explanation now. What is going on? So I'm so, so excited to pick this one up and it is also out on February 27th. Next is Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Poronek and this is a Polish inspired book and it's got like this like dark eldritch cottagecore vibe, which I love. So we have Liska and she knows that magic is deadly but when she unleashes her own powers she's caught by the demon warden of the wood, the Lesi, the Les, Les Z, who offers her a bargain one year of servitude in exchange for a wish. So uh yeah that the, those like gothic horror eldritch forest vibes absolutely here for it. And Where the Dark Stands Still is out on February 27th. Next is All This Twisted Glory by Tarad Muffy. This is so far one of my favorite covers of the year. We have This Woven Kingdom is the first book in the series and I'll pop up the cover for these infinite threads. Tarad Muffy knows how to pack an emotional punch. So Alizé is a long lost heir to a Jin kingdom and then one day she makes a mistake. And then we also have Cameron who is the prince and kind of knows that there is darkness descending upon the kingdom but yet he is drawn to the serving girl with strange eyes. This is Persian inspired and just honestly such stunning cover design and I just know of Toronto Mafia's beautiful writing and I'm very excited to read this series. All This Twisted Glory came out on February 6th. Next we have ASAP by Axie O which is the sequel or companion to XOXO by Axie O and this is a YA k-pop romance and the first book was just so cute so so cute and now we are following some characters from the first book we are following Sori who is a k-pop trainee and is like a wealthy daughter of one of the executives of the company and then she also you know had a romance with Nathaniel who is now a debuted k-pop star but yeah she can't stop thinking about him and oh my god I just know it's gonna be like so much k-pop like fun and cuteness and I'm really excited to pick up this one because I love the first one so much and I'll probably listen to this one on audio I really like listening to like YA romance contemporaries on audio they hit different for whatever reason ASAP came out on February 6th next is Visions of Flesh and Blood by JLA this is a compendium companion novel to the From Blood Nash series. At this point I'm just gonna buy anything she releases in the world. I think it's like diary entries and other facts and things like yes I'm going to buy it and read it because I just am a sucker for the series at this point. And that one comes out on February 27th. Then we have Love Contract by Sophie Lark which I'm very excited. This is kind of her first foray into like workplace romantic comedies and it's a workplace fake romance. So I am excited to see Sophie take on a new genre and this book is out February 21st. Let's move on to March now. Firstly on March 1st we have Burn of the Everflame by Pen Cole and I feel like this series has been kind of blowing up recently and I am definitely down to read it. I want to read it soon. The series is called The Kindred's Curse Saga and the first book is Spark of the Everflame. So DM kind of gets this opportunity to enter into the uh, dark world of descended royalty and unlock the web of mysteries her mother left behind and the dying king's handsome mysterious heir watching her every move. Just sounds like a good solid fantasy romance and I'm very intrigued by it. Next is Of Sword and Silver by January Bell and January Bell is an alien romance author that I really enjoy and I'm very excited for her first fantasy romance and this one is out on March 7th. So our two main characters are bound to rival gods but then they make a pact to each other to survive. He will help her find a cure for the blood curse in return for his freedom. So now they are enemies that have to work together. I just love that premise. This one is like <laughs> A cottagecore dream this cover and that is the hedge witch of fox hall by anna bright and i literally have been in love with this cover and it says it's a gorgeous fan standalone fantasy romance for perfect for fans of margaret rogerson and allison saft so that sounds like my cup of tea honestly so magic is fading from wales and it is cut off and then the two princes are forced into a rivalry because the father promises whichever one can bring magic back to the land, the crown. And then we have Fionn, 
and these are i think these are welsh names so i definitely definitely need to look up the correct pronunciations i'm so sorry if i'm butchering them yana is a hedge witch who does magic for poor folk and she uses only what nature can spare and then she kind of gets embroiled in between the conflict with these two brothers and it just sounds like the most beautiful charming fantasy romance vibes and it's got dragons so <laughs> i'm there um and it comes out on march 12th i'm literally pressing pre-order <laughs> right now because i realized i didn't pre-order it yet okay Next we have What Mantra's Gods by Rosamund Hunt. Again, this cover, beautiful. Kind of obsessed with it. And again, another standalone fantasy romance, and this one is loosely inspired by Sleeping Beauty. So centuries ago, a sorcerer, Reuven, raised a deadly briar around Runakia's palace, and then that forced the royal family to go into an enchanted sleep. Then we have Leah, who is destined to kill Reuven and wake up the royals, but when she succeeds, she finds her duty is now to marry into the royal family and forge a pact with a god or die. And to make matters even worse, Reuven's spirit is haunting her. And then she is sent on a pilgrimage to awaken the gods and Reuven might be her only hope. I mean, I kind of love this plot. It sounds very intriguing and very cool. Um, and this one is out on March 5th. Next we have Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer, which is the sequel to God Killer, which I feel like has kind of blown up. And most interestingly, this book was released in like the UK and Australia before it hit the US. I don't know why that happened, but I just think it's interesting. So gods are forbidden in this kingdom. God killers are uh, employed to destroy any gods who try to rise from the shadows. We have Kissin, who makes a living off killing gods and enjoys it, but then Kissin is tasked with helping a young noble girl whose soul is bonded to a tiny god of white lies, and Kissin can't kill it without killing the girl too. They are also joined by a knight on this quest, so sounds fun. The sequel is out on March 12th. Next is The Prisoner is Thrown by Holly Black, which is the sequel to The Stolen Heir. The Stolen Heir is a companion sequel to The Cruel Prince, and this book follows Oak, who is Jude's younger brother, and he is entangled with Soren, who is the child queen of the Court of Teeth. That's all I'm really going to say because it's like a companion sequel, but we're in this land of very cruel fairies, and I really, really love The Cruel Prince trilogy, and I'm excited to get to this book, and as well as The Prisoner's Throne. Prisoner's Throne is out on March 5th. Next is Kingdom of the Forgotten by Teresa Weeks, and this is the fourth book in the Witch Walker series. So every harvest moon, the witch collector rides into the valley and leads one of them home into the immortal Frost King to remain forever. And so Reyna has one desire to kill the Frost King and the witch collector who stole her sister. But then a more sinister threat rises and she has to work with this witch collector. So I mean, definitely some enemies to lovers vibes. And this fourth book in the series comes out on March 5th. Next is A Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage, which is the companion or interconnected next book to Done and Dusted. I literally love this like comic book pop art for a cowboy romance cover and the cover of Swift and Saddled is amazing. And we are following Ada who is a city girl who refuses to be saddled with any man. And then we have a Weston who is the cowboy who wants her anyways. That's like really all I need to know. The covers just like intrigue me so much and I love cowboy romance so I'm very excited for this book to have its moment and it is out on March 5th. And then the last book I'm going to talk about today is The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. This book is very interesting because it looks like it is independently published but it's getting a special exclusive edition from Barnes & Noble which is the first time I have seen that not through an indie book being acquired and then getting a special edition so this is kind of I think a new precedent for Barnes & Noble and it seems like they're going to be trying out like making some exclusive editions for some popular indie books. And the exclusive edition like has a lot of very cool like art and features and looks so pretty and pink. And the only thing in the description says, a treasonous princess, a villainous rebel, an illicit affair that threatens to burn them all. Um, I liked her King of Stars and Shadows series. It's definitely on the higher spice level of fantasy romance. And so I will definitely be checking this one out and it is out on March 19th. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. I thought that I really wasn't going to have as many books because I narrowed it down to only three months, but I still have a lot to talk about. I am very excited about all these books coming out, and I hope to read them at some point in my life. At this point, just sometime in my life, if I'm going to buy them and put them on my collection because I'm really trying to get through my physical TV or <laughs> trying to be better about buying books and then reading them immediately as well. So excited for all of these. Let me know which ones you are most excited for. Leave a little dragon emoji if you've read this far because I feel like I talked about a lot of books with dragons. Maybe only two? I don't know. Just leave a little dragon emoji. That's what I'm feeling at the moment. And have some fun reading some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>